The nomadic warrior theory and the sedentary farmer's theory are two contrasting hypotheses about the origin of the Indo-European Indo languages. Um, when looking, when analyzing the nomadic theory, we can see that it claims that the first Proto-Indo-European speakers were the Kurgan people, whose homeland, as we can see um, in the map on when we look at the red hearth that says Kurgan hearth, was in the steppes near the border between what is present-day Russia and Kazakhstan. The earliest archaeological evidence of the Kurgans dates to around 4,300 BC. And the Kurgans were nomadic herders, and they were among the first people to domesticate horses and cattle, and they migrated in search for grassland for their animals. So due to, uh, to their great uh, capacity to domesticate animals, they, they, were, they had bases on which to expand, which in fact took them westward through Europe, eastward to Siberia, and southwestward uh, toward, I toward Iran and Southeast Asia as uh, the red and purple arrows showcase on the map. Um, also, they traveled west and south through Europe uh, as the yellow bubble um, shows on the map, where they were able to spread their language through um, their um, spread. Kurgan's overrode ex uh, existing uh, matriarchal mother goddess worshipping societies imposing their own warrior religion as well as their patriarchal culture throughout east uh, throughout europe and western asia uh, as the nomadic warriors conquered different areas in europe as we can see as they expanded into west westward europe uh, in countries like what is present day greece um they did so through conquership, through military conquership, uh, which is one of the main uh, contrasts between this theory and the next theory that we're going to be talking about. Uh, they implanted their theory, uh, sorry, sorry, they implanted their culture uh, and spread their language due to their desire to spread their view on society and their view on religion and, as I've said before, their patriarchal culture. However, this, uh, the second hypothesis is the sedentary farmer's uh, hypothesis, uh, which was produced in 1973, years after the nomadic warrior theory. Uh, and this theory is much more peaceful uh, and not as aggressive as the, since it does not rely on military conquership as much. This theory was um, proposed by, at the Cambridge University by, the, uh, by an archaeologist called Colin Renfrew. This states that, uh, that this theory claims were the first speaker, speakers of Proto-Indo-European -Indo lived 2,000 years before the Kurgans in eastern Anatolia, as we can see the green Anatolian hearth uh, in what is present-day Turkey, because that, where, that is where um, eastern Anatolia was located. Um, these people uh, spoke uh, what became Proto-Indo-European languages, uh, and according to this thesis, and as the red and green arrow, sh as the green arrows show, they initially migrated to Greece, and from Greece, uh, they also migrated, er and from Greece and from their Antolian hearth, as the map showcases, they also mi migrated eastwards, east, uh, eastwards towards countries like Ukraine and Russia. Uh, then from Greece, they also, as the red arrows show, they migrated westward toward Italy, Sicily, Corsica, and the Mediterranean coast of France, Spain, and Portugal. Um, and then from there, as the yellow arrows show, show, they also moved to northern Europe and places like Romania and north and and, and then northwest towards Britain. Uh, the Indo-Iranian branch of Indo-European either diffused directly, which is uh, the green arrows, either diffused directly uh, due to migration from the Antolian hearth showcased here, or um, and then it, it spread to the south shores of the Black and Caspian Seas uh, by way of Iran and Pakistan, or it spread indirectly by way of Russia north of the Black and Caspian Seas, which then spread it um, into the Indo-Iranian branch. So now that I have outlined these theories according to different sources which are cited below um, and at the end of this video, I'm going to be talking about uh, the claimed downfalls of the two different theories. Both of both theories have evident downfalls and evident uh, and lack uh, evident 
evidence in different different stances in different cases. The nomadic warrior thesis was orig originally gained a lot of uh, uh, popularity, not really due to the evidence that it was founded, but more due to the pragmatic reasons that it solved the mystery of the origin of the Indo-European language, which up to that point had been something that was unknown to Western thought and Western culture. Uh, the nomadic warrior thesis maintained popularity despite uh, the uh, the absence of evidence of invasions and of cultural continuity for the time in question, which began to appear uh, in the archaeological literature of the 1970s, which came later on after the theory was originally developed. Some archaeologists challenged the notion that the Kurgans rode horses at all, and others have questioned the original linguistic, linguistic analysis that put the Indo-European homeland north of the Black Sea, which is where... Um, the Kurgans were claimed to originate north of the Black Sea, as we can, as we saw in the original map. Yet historical linguists have continued to assume the Kurgan theory as an undisputed truth because uh, the the how do I call this the basis of truth found in archaeologists and the credibility there you go of archaeologists uh, has has for long been disputed in a societal context uh, and that is what kind of has, has reinforced despite the lack of archaeological evidence uh, the presence and predominance of the nomadic warrior theory um, instead the sedentary farmers hypothesis has uh, also has holes um, one of the biggest ones is that if the Europeans on the one hand and the Indo-Iranians uh, Indo on the other hand had once lived together as agriculturists in, An in the Anatolian hearth shown in the map, um, it is implied or it should be implied that they have a common vocabulary for agricultural terms. However, unfortunately, as we analyze the different uh, languages and language fam families currently, that is not the case at all. Our agricultural terms for European languages and Indo-Iranian languages are not very close in any way, shape, or form, which makes it hard to, uh, to believe that they, uh, they originated from the same Antolian hearth. Um, Another uh, big hole in this theory is that the Hittite language of Antolia, which is the hypothetical linguistic source of the Indo-European language through this theory, was a minority language uh, spoken mostly by the elites uh, of the Antolian culture, whereas the common language was not Indo-European at all. And so if the common language was not Indo-European as uh, people um, spread, uh, hypothetically spread uh, due to agriculture, the fact that their common language, while doing this was not Indo-European, makes it hard to believe that this was actually um, the source of the Indo-European culture. Due to this, uh, my personal belief, if I had to choose, um, I, I kind of stand in the middle of when, when asked uh, which uh, theory I most agree with. Uh, but if I had to say, I would agree with the nomadic warrior theory, and this is why. I do think that uh, Antolia ha did play a role because it is proven archaeologically and through other um, through other evidence uh, that the that uh, Indo-European language did in some ways originate in Antolia. And I am not, and I do not question that fact. But I do, however, believe that it spread into uh, the European society which we currently live in is due to reasons attributed more to the nomad nomadic warrior theory. I do believe uh, that people, before um, migrating for agricultural reasons, uh, people in that time, um, in 6500 BC, migrated because they wanted to spread their religion, because they wanted to spread their culture, their way of seeing life. Because I personally believe that that is more of, that is more of a push to spread your culture, to move, to expand, because you believe in a certain set of beliefs which you wish to spread to other cultures, to other areas. Um, despite the fact that um, agricultural reasons can be very practical and very pragmatic and can lead people to migrate, I do not think that they have they, that they can push people to migrate so adamantly and lead to the spread of cultures and their languages in the way that we see the spread of the Indo-European language. In addition, I believe that what happened before, um, what caused, I guess, people to... Um, follow agricultural patterns and uh, find different sources and take advantage of different lands in the European and Asian landscape 
uh, during this time was the fact that preceding uh, the migration due to agricultural patterns, people decided to migrate and move, as I've said before, because they wanted to conquer different areas. And as a product uh, of that conquering, as a product uh, of these actions, uh, did they then afterwards decide to um, take advantage of those lands and uh, use them for agricultural purposes. So because of these reasons, because of the fact uh, that there is evidence that uh, shows us the weakness of the sedentary farmers uh, theory, and because I believe that the nomadic warrior theory uh, strikes more at the core of what has led man to expand, conquer, and spread his values and move uh, from his current location, that is why I believe that the nomadic warrior theory is a more likely hypothesis. Now, I realize that um, one can very much disagree with that, and there, uh, as I've kind of outlined briefly in the before I start talking about my own opinion, that there are there is much intellectual debate about what has actually caused the beginning of the Indo-European culture, uh, Indo-European language. Sorry, I do not believe. Um, that if I had to choose between the two, uh, that the second uh, sedentary farmers uh, hypothesis is the one that is most grounded in uh, historical, cultural, and human reality. Uh, that being said, uh, I hope that this little lesson, as stumbly as it was, uh, was able to properly summarize the two different theories and.